So, ladies and gentlemen, today we shall discuss something very interesting. It's the secret of planets in the 10th house, not of your Lagna chart only. Any house, any divisional chart, okay? D9, 10th house, D10, 10th house, D1, D30, D, D100, D1000, any number of these, okay? So, <clears throat> It's very crucial when you are judging a divisional chart, you take into consideration. Of course, every house is important. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But now uh, the 10th house is specifically crucial when it comes to uh, the, that divisional chart because you have to understand what the 10th house is. Many times people think that, oh, 10th house is where the sun gets directional strength. It's the house of Name, fame, power, position, authority, dominance, strength, influence, and anything which a materialistic person could want, you know, including finances, money, gains. 11th house represents gains of any kind, not only external monetary gains, gain of anything. But what people don't know, or even if they know, they ignore, is that the 10th house is the house of determination. It's the house of resolutions. It's the house of Pratigya, taking vows. Like Bhishma Pitama had taken vow, not to marry. So, uh, now, it doesn't have to be a vow of celibacy. It can be any vow. It's like a vow to follow certain principles in life. Okay? Now, you may think that's the ninth house. So, therefore, you have to understand the topmost of the yoga in astrology, the best, the most powerful, the most brilliant, the most crucial yoga that you can have in a horoscope is Asparishi Parasha, Dharma Karmadipati Yoga, Yudhishthir Maharaj, Lord Ramachandra, and so many personalities, they were born with this yoga. So if you see what happens in this yoga, this yoga occurs when the ninth Lord and the tenth Lord are somehow linked. They are in mutual exchange or they are uh, conjunct or they are aspecting each other, right? Why in the universe does Parasara say that ninth house should be linked with the 10th house? Parasara does not say Dharma Karmadipati Yoga occurs when the ninth lord is related to the Lagna lord. It's very weird, right? I mean, even if the Lagna lord is not involved, the 10th lord is involved. Then also this yoga occurs. Why? Because... The ninth house gives you inclination. The ninth house gives you the divine knowledge from the Guru. Fifth house is what you have learnt and you have accumulated by your own practice. Okay? And ninth house is the enlightenment, the em empowerment which comes from the Guru Shishya Parampara. Therefore, opposite to the ninth house is the third house of Diksha, Guru Upadesh. When you get initiated. Right? So therefore, the 10th house is very crucial because when the 9th house joins with the 10th house, then what happens is you are not only having ideals. It's very easy to have big ideals and big uh, you know, principles that you want to follow. But then the question is, are you following them? So the 10th house will tell you to what extent things manifest practically in your life. Literal manifestation, that is what is the 10th house. Every other house, especially the trines, can give you uh, fancy desires. You know, I want to be good, I want to be nice, I want to be spiritual, I want to read Gita, I want to read Bible, I want to read Quran, I want to go to Vindavan, I want to go to any other place. But the question is, are you having that discipline which is required to practice these principles? That will be decided by the 10th house. The planets in it, the Lagna Lords link with the 10th house or the 10th Lord or uh, the link between uh, sun and moon which is there or you know, even sun uh, as the Karaga for the 10th house or in general as a significator of Atma also and as a planet which gets the belly there is also important. So therefore, the 10th house of every divisional chart. So imagine every divisional chart. So, for example, D10 chart. Okay, so the D10 chart is seen for your uh, overall uh, growth in your 
career, not the literal career which we think, okay, I have a job and I become a CEO one day and I retire, or I become a vice president and I retire, or I become a president of a country or chief minister of a state and I retire. That's not what career is. Career can be anything which you are doing like a, as a contribution to the society. So the D10 chart will tell you how much are you contributing to a, towards a positive change in a society. So sometimes people, I see people who have very bad careers and a very good D10. So what does this mean? It means that the person may not have finances or reputation, name, fame, power, position, authority, but they are making a significant contribution. And on the other hand, you might have people with a lot of money and a terrible D10. So your D10 chart will not necessarily always tell about your finances. Okay, so therefore, any chart you take, you know, D9. D9 is seen for inner traits, your hobbies, your inclinations, your nature, and to some extent your marriage. Okay. And um, D9 is seen for your uh, how much do you have to work? How much bhagya do you have? How much is destined? How much will is there? All these things are seen from the detail. And D7, uh, the subtamsha, is seen for children and interaction with your spouse exclusively. Okay. And D9 is also seen for dharma and so many other things. That's why it is known as uh, D9, okay, the ninth house actually. So, um, and then D7 could be seen for so many other things. And you know, then you have. Um, D60, Shasti Amsa is there, and then D16 is there, you know, then D24, D30, so, so many divisional charts are there. So, for every divisional chart, the 10th house will tell you the planet sitting in the 10th house, or the planets aspecting the 10th, or even if you do not have planets, the lord of the 10th house, the dignity of the 10th lord, of that divisional chart, will tell you to what extent are you ready to make those necessary changes in your life after which you might see the physical manifestation to what extent are you going to pay the price to what extent are you willing to uh, put in the hard work that's required so therefore if a person has a great D1 chart, then uh, the person may speak uh, big, big things sometimes I've seen. If a person has a very strong 10th house or a very strong 7th house, the person may say, oh, marriage is very important, you know, career is very important, money is very important. For me, it's important to be famous. But then uh, I go to the D9 or the D10 chart and I see the situation of the 10th house there. And that is in a precarious state. So then what happens? This person lacks the necessary discipline in that particular area of life, okay? So therefore, it's very crucial that you judge the 10th house of every divisional chart. And if you have uh, Dharma Karmadipati Yoga in these divisional charts, it, it's a very big blessing. So Dharma Karmadipati Yoga in the divisional charts, okay? So it means if in your Navamsha, the 9th Lord and the 10th Lord are somehow connected, okay? So then it means you are specially empowered by the grace of the gods and the gurus that you will make all those necessary changes in your life to achieve the ultimate purpose of that, that horoscope, of that divisional chart. And that could be true for anything. So, so for example, if you have a very strong 10th house or very well-placed 10th lord of your Navamsa chart, and you have a very good uh, seventh house or Venus or seventh lord in your D1 chart, and the dasas are also good, then it's like saying you have a good marriage and you are maintaining it very properly. Okay, But if suppose the D1 is good and the tenth house of the D9 is not very good, then it would happen you take your spouse very cheaply, lightly, you don't value your spouse, or you know, you're carefree basically. Or if there are difficulties, then your marriage collapses. So have you seen couples, you know, they have so many, so many challenges, you know, they are incompatible or they have so much struggles, you know, they, they cannot tolerate each other, but still they are able to stay together sometimes with a lot of understanding, maturity and, you know, 
um, spiritual practices, uplifting themselves. How? That is because that divisional chart has a strong 10th house because then it means when it comes to that area of life, they are ready to make all the necessary changes. They are ready to do whatever it takes to sustain that horoscope because the 10th house dominates the chart. So a planet in the 10th of any divisional chart will dominate that divisional chart. Okay. So what that planet is and which houses that planet is lording, make a note of it. Or even if you have a divisional chart where your 10th house is empty, but your 10th lord will be sitting somewhere. What are the planets that are sitting with this so-called 10th lord of these divisional charts? Okay, It's very crucial that you identify. And anytime you are feeling that you lack uh, motivation in a particular area of life or you are very unstable in that area of life. So suppose for marriage, uh, if you are if you are just talking of uh, marriage, then it could mean the Saptamsha chart. But if you are talking of marriage at a higher level, you know, like uh, progressing spiritually, going towards Grihastha Ashram. So the D7 will tell you about Griha Medhi Ashram. Griha Medhi means two people are staying like uh, animals. They are just, you know, having physical pleasure or they are having kids and, you know, they are just watching TV and they are just wasting their human life. That's what is the Saptamsha chart. But D9 chart, the Navamsha chart will tell you about Grihastha Ashram. Grihastha means when two people, a man and a woman, they stay together and they uh, have physical enjoyment uh, as per the sanction of the scriptures. And then they progress spiritually together. So 90%, 99% of the people in Kali Yuga, they are not at the level of D9. They are at the level of D7 because most of the people in Kali Yuga, they are very animalistic and they have no spiritual goals. That is why they are suffering. 99% of the people in Kali Yuga, they are suffering. I will tell you, married people are suffering, single people are also suffering. <laughs> Alright, so it depends what you are doing within the marriage. That will decide, should we check your D9 or we should we check your D7. Okay. So many times people think, oh marriage, that's it, go to D9. But are you in D9 or are you in D7? That is the question that you have to ask yourself. Right. So if you are, if you think you are at the level of D7, you are just uh, living like two nice animals, then you must do spiritual practices together by which you can uplift yourself and elevate yourself to a level where you can behave like humans. And what does, what is the special characteristic of humans? That is, Athato Brahma Jigyasa, as the Vedanta Sutra says, so reading the Bhagavad Gita every day without fail, chanting mantras, doing spiritual practices, fasting at least once in a week <laughs> and visiting uh, spiritual communities in the weekends and visiting the holy dhams once in a month or once in three months, once in six months at least. By doing this and maintaining association of great personalities, sadhus and mahajans, mahatmas, that is the way you uh, become civilized as a human being. So then your D9 works, you see. Just if you are getting married, your D9 doesn't work. Alright, so you have to check all these divisional charts. So check the 10th house and check what is the dignity. Okay, and let me know. And yeah, and as I said, uh, if you feel that you lack commitment in that area of life, go to that chart and then check and decide for yourself. The planet sitting there can help you being more committed. Okay. Now what that planet is, is there are unlimited possibilities and which houses the planet lords and all this. So that will vary for all the 7 billion people, all right? So, but this is a very important thing which you should know when you are studying astrology because sometimes people will tell you, oh, I am lacking focus in this area of life. So what should I do? Then you see the D1 and then things are great there. But then where's the problem coming from? You will see that divisional chart can have problems with the 10th house, okay? And when I say good or bad, good things or problems, it is from all the angles of astrology, okay? Like lordships and uh, weakness, the sign, the house, the conjunctions, natural friends, enemies, all these things have to be considered. So don't just say, oh, I have Saturn Rahu Ketu in the 10th house of D10, my life is ruined. No. What if uh, you are a Taurus Lagna and Saturn is your 9th lord and 10th lord and he's sitting there? Wow, fantastic, right? So therefore, don't just make blind judgments. That if you have a malefic in the 10th in a divisional chart, 
that horoscope or that area of life is ruined. Okay, so not, do not make these mistakes. So judge collectively, holistically. And once you judge the divisional charts, do not forget to come and check the D1 and the Dashas. Okay, if you don't do that, it is like a royal blunder, it's a colossal blunder. Why? Because the D1 and the Dashas will tell you when these things manifest. Okay, and the Mahadasha Lords also you should check in these divisional charts. How is the 10th house associated? How is the 10th Lord associated okay. with these Mahadasha Lords? Okay. What's going on? Are they helping each other or are they pulling each other down? Because you may see a person has a planet in 10th house, uh, 11th house. Let's take example. Suppose somebody has Venus in 11th and their Antadasha runs. Person may get a promotion, but what if this Venus is in the 8th house of the Dashamsha chart? So then what happens? The person will waste this uh, opportunity. Opportunity will come and the person may take it, but the person won't be able to maintain because that level of dedication and determination is not there. Okay? So therefore, do not forget the D1 and the Dashas. Do not forget that. All right. So I'm curious to know which planet do you have in your 10th house of at least one or two divisional charts. You can maintain, uh, mention uh, it to me in the comments and you can tell me how has your determination been and what are those things which you do in your life when you fall off from your determination okay so for example if you feel demotivated in your marriage what is that which you do which brings your focus back or if you feel demotivated towards your children or career or parents you know rather samsha d12 what do you do that brings your focus and commitment back okay so i'm curious to know it right and if you have if you know your friends family members what they have then just write it okay that will be all from my side. Thank you for your patience. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And my consultations are also through my website down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him, irrespective of what is there in your divisional charts, 10,000, all right?